What is going on, investors? Hopefully, you guys had a great day out there. Time to kick earnings season off again here on the Investor Channel with Nike. They kind of kick things off for us. That's one of the first stocks that come around this earning season. Obviously, we're a few weeks away from all the major tech stocks and bank stocks and things like that that we'll certainly cover here on the channel, but we love to kick things off here with Nike, ticker symbol NKE. If you're new to the channel or somewhat new to the channel, we review earnings of these companies when they come out. We'll take a look at a little bit of the press release. We'll take a little bit of valuation look at this one. We'll jump into the numbers. They're very critical here with Nike. Some interesting things going on with Nike in terms of their financials, what's going on with their inventory, things of that nature. And then we'll go over the stock chart. We'll take a look at what's been going on with this one. It's been on a monster move over the last year. This stock is up over 100%. Year to date, though, pretty flat, just up about 2% over the last couple months. $200 billion market cap on this one. The yield has slipped under uh, 1%. You're at 0.76. I remember when I was buying this one, it was closer to 2%. You get $1.10 per year per share. Now, I just want to show you this just as you know, a buy and hold investor. This is my IRA account. And you're limited to a $6,000 deposits in this per year. And so you got to be kind of judicious and with your buying and, and, and do it over a long period of time. And I just wanted to show you this kind of the power of holding a stock for a long period of time. I started buying Nike in January of 2016. So about five years ago, I bought about five shares at about $63 each. And I kept buying it over the next couple of years. It even went down in price. I started buying it at 63. Here I'm buying it again at 56. And I bought it several times. Some of this is dividend reinvestment. It looks like I kind of went all in here in December of 2016 for $50 per share. That was the last time I actually bought it was about five years ago, but I held it. And look, we're up 148% on this one. This has got a total gain of 2,200 bucks and a value of $3,800. So just buy and hold solid companies like this. And now you're getting dividend reinvestment. I get about $8, uh, you know, uh, you know, a little bit more than that. I get about $26 a year on this one. And so it's, you know, pretty good in terms of the yield that I'm getting from what I invest in it. Now, Q3 revenues came in with Nike. Part of owning a stock, the other reason why I showed you this is part of owning a stock like this, even though I'm not adding to my position, it's just maintaining, you know, knowledge of what Nike is doing. Just in case you get a big drawdown in the shares, things like that. Well, maybe you'd want to come in there and buy the dip and it sure would help to know the financials. And so that's kind of what we do here on the channel. Their Q3 revenues try trailed consensus. So revenue trailed consensus, but I think profit wasn't that bad. Now he, they say shipping snafus. If you're in the business of e-commerce, like I am, and that's one of the businesses that I run on the side here is boy, it is hard to get some stuff. And what I noticed reading through their pr press release and things like that, Nike has some stuff just sitting out in the ocean, like in a boat. Okay. They make this stuff over in China or, or, you know, Singapore or whatever they're making it. And it is not getting here to the United States. It's taking a long time. It's just sitting out on the docks. So they are having trouble and that could create some problems later in the year. Maybe they have like sweaters sitting over that were supposed to be here during the winter time and they don't get them till the spring or summertime. So that's obviously would be a problem. We'll see if Nike has some issues with that going forward. They might have to have some discounting. And if you're a fan of Nike products, there might be some discounts on the way. Not saying that's guaranteed, but that's possible. Now, from a price to sales basis, I have a five year price to sales. This thing would trade pretty comfortably between that two and three times, maybe even as high as four times sales. But since the pandemic, this thing is just blown up. Now we're closer to six times sales. So from a price to sales basis, this one doesn't make a lot of sense in my opinion. But when we get over the stock chart, we'll see if that maybe it paints a little bit different story. Now, jumping into the numbers here. We've got our three months ended here. We've got last year over this year in terms of quarterly. And this this was Q3. So we've got nine months ended here. We see here for the total revenues, they came in relatively nicely. Okay, last up about 3%. You're not getting like this exponential growth in Nike. They're still having a little bit of problems, obviously, with their shipping and, and inventory and things like that. And so this number could have been a little bit better, but I don't think you're expecting that much more growth than this at the current time with Nike. You see for the nine months ended, they're up about 4%. Now, so gross profits, though, they were able to squeeze a little bit more out of the gross margin. You see here it went from 44%. So what happens is you have your revenue here and then this is the cost of those sales. 
and you get this gross profit margin, and it's 44.3% here for the last three-month period. Here, it ticked up to 45. So you like to see margins in the mid-40s with Nike. You see here for the nine months, it actually is relatively flat. Now, they have these demand creation expenses. This is like marketing, things like that. They just happen to call it demand creation. It went down because, again, you have sporting events and things like that, and in-store retail just is, is still not back. And so they've actually been able to cut that expense and you have operating expenses as well. You've seen Nike and other companies, but Nike in particular have done some layoffs and things like that. Reduced headcount at the company that has trimmed that by about 3%. So total selling and general administrative expenses actually down 7%. You see it was 32% of revenues in the previous quarter, now down to 29. So they've done a nice job at Nike. Okay. We've increased revenues. We've increased margins and we reduced costs. Guys, that's actually a really nice combination because let's just say Nike needs to pull some levers. They need to do some more marketing. They need to hire some more people. Well, they've shown that they've been able to reduce these costs, but still increase margins, still increase revenues. That's sign of a very, very strong brand. That's why I've held Nike for a very long time is because not very many companies can do this, especially in the apparel space, but across the board, across all stocks. That is actually really hard to do, and they've done it nicely over the last three months. Now, you see here, they did it for the last nine months as well. We've, uh, you know, it reduced our percentage of revenues in terms of our expenses from 32 down to 28, and we've seen, again, revenues actually rise during that period of time and gross profits. So just all in all, pretty nice. Now, a lot of this is flowing down to the net income side. You had a really fantastic quarter here. Uh, you know, even with the effective tax rate going up a little bit, you had just a really nice net income number pulling down here. You ended up making 90 cents diluted. Again, I showed you this stock pays a dollar ten for an entire year. An entire year, they pay a dollar ten. In a quarter, they make almost all of that. You see, for nine months, we earned two sixty two. So more than half of it. This is a in my opinion, Nike is a dividend growth company. So they're constant. I think the last dividend raise was like maybe a 10 or 11% raise somewhere in that ballpark. I'm going off the top of my head, so it might not be exact, but they're raising the dividend by actually a fair amount each year. And that is very powerful over the long period of time. And when a company is in this good a financial condition in terms of earnings, then you can probably expect that to continue. I would expect Nike to raise this dividend rate to at least I think a dollar fifteen, maybe even a dollar twenty. A dollar twenty would be a ten percent raise, oh, a little less than that actually, uh, uh, onto that. And I would actually expect that because they have plenty of earnings to go along with this in a difficult time now balance sheet perspective, things are looking good. What Nike did is what a lot of companies did when the pandemic hit, they basically drew down on some credit revolvers that they had. So they blew up their cash and cash equivalents because they didn't know what was going to go on. They didn't know if the credit markets was kind of tighten up. So you see here, cash and cash equivalents up 197%. Short-term investments up, you know, 1100%. Okay. They bolted on like a ton of cash to this balance sheet. Like it looks like over about $10 billion. So they tapped their credit lines for uncertainty. I don't think they're going to need it. So we'll see what they end up doing with that cash. I think they hinted that they're going to resume their buyback in this stock heading into the, I think the, either the fourth quarter, which is the next quarter. So they could be using some of this cash to actually buy back the shares, which would also be bullish for the stock and for it, and buy and hold investors in particular. You see total assets actually ticked up 38%, but total liabilities actually ticked up the kind of the same percentage because again, a lot of that was just this long-term debt. They basically just bolted on this long-term debt down here. Now, Here's where it gets interesting with Nike because they break things out in the region. So we got North America, we got Europe, we got China, and then we got APAC, Asia Pacific. We see here, it's interesting, 
Total in the United States over the last three months actually down. It was a pretty, I don't want to say bad, but this is a pretty bad quarter, in my opinion, for North America. And it could be driven that they just didn't have the product in stock because it's just sitting out at sea. And so we'll see what happens in, in the coming quarters because Europe was down 4%. That's not that bad. Take a look at China. Okay, this is why you never see LeBron James or any Nike athlete I mean, they bashed the United States, especially when we had the, the president that we had before that we did now. They would just openly badmouth the United States, but they would never, ever, ever say anything bad about China. And you wonder why, because 51% growth in the quarter. Oh my goodness, this is a company that is becoming more of a China story than anything because take a look, footwear up 50%, apparel up 54%, equipment up 58%. Now, the other thing too is China was kind of the first one hit by the pandemic, so it could be they're the, the first ones out of it. And so maybe, maybe you can reduce that. Look, this is almost full recovery numbers here with China. And that maybe, I don't think you're going to see these kind of growth numbers here in North America, but it's possible that we turn positives here in the North America in the coming months. We see APAC was down about 7%, but it's really interesting that, that North America was actually down the most in all their divisions. But the story is really China. Now let's take it. Here's our earnings. So I just showed you revenue basically for, the different regions and here's here's what we got here north america though take a look they even though we were down 10 percent in terms of our revenues take a look we were actually up on the earnings okay we went from 937 up to 970 now talk about china take a look at china look at this 75 percent and China's earnings actually overtook the United States. And I believe that is for the first time ever for Nike is that now China's revenue, at least from a quarter perspective, excuse me, China's earnings before EBITDA basically before is now bigger than North America. Wow. That if that can continue and we can continue to see this type of growth rate. Okay, I can see why possibly Nike is getting this type of price to sales ratio from the street. Okay, because you have very savvy investors looking at this and saying, wow, look at this. We're growing our revenues, our, our, our earnings 75% in China, growing our sales by 50%. And there could be lots and lots more runway there heading for Nike. We'll see what happens. Now, moving to the stock chart. I got this way zoomed out because I just wanted to show you we were in a gigantic uptrend. I mean, this thing was locked in an uptrend. Okay, basically something like that. And it broke it. Okay, it broke it like most stocks right at the end of January into February. And now we're just channeling sideways with this one. So it could be a period where Nike kind of consolidates here. Wouldn't surprise me if we consolidate here between 131 and 145-ish. Now, so if you want to go long Nike, let's just assume you want to buy shares like I did, put it in your IRA, sock it away. You experience that kind of dividend growth over a long period of time, reinvest those dividends, and, and you know, 20 years later, you've got a nice little nest egg just in your Nike shares. This is not a bad consolidation area. I, I personally, now you see here, the stock is actually trading down in the after hours. And so it's trading right where this line is. So we're basically halfway in between this consolidation area. I'd like it closer to down here, but I wouldn't necessarily get greedy. I wouldn't open a full position up at this period either. Let's say you wanted a thousand dollars of Nike. I'd nibble a two or three shares in this box here and wait to see what happens. Okay. Because if you break this area here, this area at 132, Tell you what, there's not a lot. And I mean, there's some stuff, some consolidation underneath here, but boy, the trend will have been negative. And you could see this stock pull down to its 50 day moving average into the 120s. That would be an area where I'd probably want to be a little bit more aggressive. Now, the other thing that could happen is it is in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and that average has actually been performing very well. This thing could break to the upside. You're really looking for it to break above 145 ish on strong volume, strong momentum that would take you up and over over above kind of the all-time highs in Nike. Me personally, since I'm a buy and hold investor, not really looking for it to do that anytime soon. Really, I just see a sideways consolidation. If we can consolidate there, 
Nike can get their, uh, you know, shipping and their inventory kind of tied up as well. That would be a good thing. And it could bring this price to sales ratio back in check, back into a more reasonable level. Basically grow into the valuation that just absolutely got blown up last year because the stock just got, I mean, this stock was on a rocket ship. I couldn't believe it. So that was Nike. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Hopefully you learned something from this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button on my videos. It really means a lot to me and it does help out the channel. Thanks for tuning in to this one. Good luck with your investments.